Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing the Pixar tag. So this was created by Matthew from This Is Me, and I was tagged by Graham Quigley, who was tagged in the original tag actually as well, so that's cool. It's like an actual, it's a chain of people actually telling me to do this, rather than just me going, oh that tag looks good, I might do that. So yeah, I was tagged by Graham Quigley, and here's a little bit of video of him doing that. And I'm going to tag, off the top of my head, Todd the Librarian, because I believe I owe you. And I'll also tag Sue and Sue's book now, because again, I think I'll you Sue. And who else? Dana Denkabain. Although I think you've just changed your channel name, haven't you? So thank you very much, Graham. And as you probably have come to expect from tags, the idea here is there are a bunch of questions which I'm going to answer. At the end, I'm going to tag a few people. And the questions in this tag are actually based on Pixar movies. Sorry, I just zoned out for a moment then. I realised I forgot to turn my lights on. Let me go and turn my lights on. As you can see, that made a massive difference and the footage was virtually unwatchable before those lights were on. Jesus. Anyway, what was I doing? What was I doing? What was I doing? I also have a bunch of books with me to answer these questions as well. So some of them aren't necessarily name a book type questions, but I thought I'd name a book anyway, because why not? So yeah, let's go. Question one. Name a book in which the characters go on a long physical journey. So this is kind of an obvious one really, but it is also a very, very good book. And this is On the Road by Jack Kerouac. This is a Penguin Modern Classics edition. And this book was really, I guess, what got me into reading the beat poets and the beat movement. And actually, I wouldn't even necessarily say now, it's, a, it's not a five star book for me. Um, I, th I think it's one of those where, again, the idea behind the book is actually almost more important than the book itself, but it's still worth reading. And uh, yeah, there's a, obviously this whole book is basically about one long road trip around America, jumping on the back of boxcars and stuff. Question number two, Inside Out, name a book about the mind. I'm quite excited about this one. This is non-fiction and this is Dr. David Lewis, The Brain Cell, When Science Meets Shopping. And according to the front here, it's about how the new mind sciences and the persuasion industry are reading our thoughts, influencing our emotions and stimulating us to shop. And this is really interesting. If you work in marketing or sales or anything like that, you should definitely read it. Because it's all about, it, it is about what it says, like how people trick us into spending more money. So it goes into, for example, a study at a supermarket it they've found playing different types of music in the wine aisles it doesn't affect how much wine people buy but certain types of music encourage people to buy more expensive wine so for example classical music versus pop music when when it's classical music they're more likely to actually spend a bit more and buy a more expensive bottle of wine and they do a lot of these things that kind of trick our minds uh, one of the big ones is at uh, Disneyland so in Disneyland all the buildings kind of face away from the entrance to the park so say this is your road going in they all kind of face away like like that so that as you're walking in because of this slight angle they all seem further away and Disneyland as a whole seems bigger to you as you're just walking in but really cleverly then when you're coming back the other way all of the buildings face towards you so as you're walking towards the exit of the park everything seems closer together and it feels like you don't have as far to go so this book includes all kinds of examples of that kind of thing in practice and basically shows you how people are manipulating us you know subconsciously pretty much to spend more money. Question number three, Monsters Inc. Who slash what is your most lovable butt creature? I guess a lot of people for this probably say like Dobby for example, but I never liked Dobby. He was always annoying. It, Dobby is the Jar Jar Binks of Harry Potter. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Anyway, I'm going for one of my old sort of favourites I guess and that is Northern Lights by Philip Pullman. So if you're American, this is the Golden Compass. And basically in these books, there are armored bears and there's an armored bear called Ioric Bernison, I believe is how you say his name. It's hard, he's Icelandic basically. So these bears kind of think and act like humans and that's why he's most lovable. He's just a, a really charming, person even though he's an armored bear if that makes sense and he's very loyal you know he's kind he's a good ruler and uh, he's just down on his luck when he when we come across him in this book okay finding nemo who's the best book dad 
So I'm going for Sam Vimes from the Discworld series, and to represent this I've got the fifth elephant, because I know he is at least in this book. I actually can't remember whether young baby Sam has been born by this point, I can't remember when little baby Sam comes along. But Sam Vimes is a great dad, I mean he might not always be there because he does a lot of work, but he loves his son, and he does everything he can to get back by about 6pm to read him uh, Where's My Cow for <laughs> to get him to sleep. So Sam Vimes. And he's a great role model as well. Brave, who's the best book mum? For this one, it has got to be who everyone goes for. This is my copy of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. And of course, I'm talking about Molly Weasley. Toy Story, a book from your childhood you think every kid should read. Now, I'm going to bring out Northern Lights again. Seriously, read this book. I'm rereading it at the moment for uh, Catalyst Reads Rereadathon. I'm really enjoying it. And um, even though I guess I'm finding, I'm being more nitpicky with the language now that I'm older and that I'm a writer myself, the story itself is stunning. The world building is great. And this is just what made me fall in love with reading. The Incredibles. If you could have any superpower or ability, what would it be and why? Right, well this is just really bleak and to the point, but it would be immortality because I'm afraid of death. There you go. Anxiety disorder, it does that for you. Ratatouille, name a fictional food you would want to eat. Yes, I do still have books. I've picked up The Silmarillion here by J.R.R. Tolkien, and I would like to eat some lembas, some elf bread. And there's a YouTube channel, which you should check out if you haven't already, called Feast of Fiction, and they make a lot of you know, fictional foods, but they make it for real. And they made Lembus on an episode of that and it looked very tasty. I wanna eat it, I'm hungry now. Coco, a book with an international setting. Firstly, I have never heard of Coco. What is this? <laughs> like, oh, when did I get old? I've got too old for Pixar movies now. I've never seen a Cars movie either. I just don't care anymore, to be honest. Anyway, I have gone for Michael G. Muntz, Zeus is dead. And this is really international and very epic as well. It's set in our modern times, but in an era in which kind of Greek gods are real. But obviously so are things like Twitter, for example. And Zeus dies, hence the title. I don't think that's much of a spoiler. And then the book follows kind of the intrigue as we see who is going to be Zeus's successor. But it goes all around the world as well and taps heavily into Greek mythology. And uh, definitely one to read if you like... Kind of, it's an indie book as well, so it's also worth supporting, but also it's kind of funny, tongue-in-cheek, you know, take on Greek mythology. It's uh, Rick Riordan for grown-ups, basically. And final question, who do you tag? And I'm going to tag Kit Kats Can Read, Catalyst Reads, and Chrissy Books and Berries. So there we have it. That was the Pixar tag. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you'd like more bookish videos. Leave a comment to let me know what you think of my answers and my book choices and all that kind of stuff. And I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye.